engage in any horseplay while in the mine area. Use the buddy system when collecting. Always keep another person within sight. <clears throat> and you might want to just narrow that down to talking distance. It doesn't do you much good if you're across the way and got a broken leg. Do not jump off hills or ledges. Do not sit on or climb over any pipelines <coughs> unless instructed by the, your guide. Stay a minimum of 50 feet from any high wall. Do not enter any area where walls are not sloped to a safe angle. <coughs> Stay clear of any deep washouts. Do not allow others to jeopardize your privileges to collect at PCS phosphate. Report any injury to your trip leader or one of the guides. They will have an accident form for you to fill out. Three loud blasts on the, are the signal to leave the mine area immediately. The blast may sound due to approaching bad weather or other emergencies. season of five years we've been allowed down here. The collecting area, we're going to be going down. There's a dirt path here, ramp, and it deposits you down there. And from that you can see the bulldozer tracks, a dirt road or slash path headed over that way. The collecting area is roughly like a question mark and it wheels around this body of water here. Um, anywhere on either side of the path, You'll see some flags on some broomsticks. It'll be white broomsticks with some hopefully red flagging on it. That identifies the end of the collecting area. Please do not go beyond the bounds. We'd like to come back next year to the pit. Uh, 25 feet away from the water at all times. And the reason we do that is because if you go get to the water, it gets really muddy. We've had to pull some people out who were up to mid-thigh and that wasn't pretty. Collecting area extends over the left boundary is this road. You can walk on the road. Do not go on the left side of the road. People are looking for some Yorktown. There's a patch right here. There's a, when you get to the bottom of the ramp, off to your right, there's a hill. There's some Yorktown there. You see the green patch in the middle, sort of where I'm pointing. There's some patches of it around there. All the rest is the Pongo. What's it take to really find them? Uh, luck. It's one of those. If you expect, if you, if it's meant to be found, you will find it. Whether it takes laying out in the open and everybody's walked over it, or seeing just a little edge, there's never any telling how it's going to happen. There's an ekphora. So what's the best area for people to look in? Uh, depends upon what they want. If they want like bramble sharks and things like that, pongo. If you want uh, the big teeth, try Yorktown. <laughs> Found a nice notorankus a few moments ago. And what's that? It's cow shark tooth. Is there any technique? Uh, not really. Just pay attention to what you're looking at and anything that doesn't look like a broken shell, at least examine it. Um, any piece of bone, go ahead and look at it because you never know what you're going to have. Uh, anything that doesn't look normal. Mother Nature likes things to shine out at you. And they will. Whereas if it's shiny, it's usually the enamel of the tooth because when they come out of the ground, they're just as shiny as if you had polished them up. Um, and any odd color, always inspect because no telling what it's going to be. So, um, I don't really see anything right now. 
Aha, and there's a tooth right here. And that's a tiger shark tooth. And that's all that it takes. <laughs> that's a piece of a whale bone. Probably a piece of a rib. Um, and then you have all sorts of fish material as well. And occasionally you'll find seal and dolphin. Um, rarely do you find land animals except possibly bird material once in a while. Um, occasionally you'll find a peccary tooth, whale teeth, all sorts of things. So that's a three inch mako shark tooth. And it has been measured out at three inches and when it came out of the ground it was just as lavender as it could be. And it was laying totally on the top. I found this tooth laying in just this gray mud. There was no shells. You couldn't even see the shells that you see here. Just this gray mud and it was laying right on top. Um, so you really never know where you're going to find anything. So how'd you feel? <laughs> Ecstatic. It was a wonderful feeling. It was as good as finding my five inch mag. <laughs> because it is one of the largest makos I've ever seen. The only one I know that's larger is at the Smithsonian and it's about a quarter of an inch longer.